Check! Cool. Yeah, I'm ready. Describe metal in a few words. How would you describe it? A couple words. Uh. Okay. Let me let me think for a second. I'm trying to think of like common things you hear in metal, but it's just gonna it's gonna be a dumb answer. Since the late 80s, early 90s, the foundations of modern chord music would be forged here. New metal and early forms of post-hardcore would start to develop here, creating a sound that mixed other elements of music with heavy metal music. In the early 2000s, post-hardcore, metalcore, and deathcore became prominent forces of heavy screamo metal music. Post-hardcore often takes a hardcore fast rhythms, aggressive vocals, and it combines it with a more pop-punky emo side of guitar and melodies, often mixing screamo and clean vocals together. Bands like Under Oath, Hawthorne Heights, and Circus Survive, and Fear Before the March of Flames are associated with post-hardcore. Metalcore took the aggressive style vocals of hardcore, putting clean vocals on the choruses, and taking the melodic sound of death metal and fast pace of thrash metal to create this genre. Metalcore's early pioneers can be associated with Killswitch Engage, Devil Wears Prada, and Gwen Stacy. Deathcore takes death metal guitar riffs, blast beats, and vocals, and it combines the influences and breakdowns involved in metalcore to create this genre. Bands mostly associated with this genre are Job for a Cowboy, Nets of the Abyss, and All Shall Perish. So what is heavy metal, and why is it so damn loud? Um, how did you first discover heavier music, and what impression did it leave on you? So, um, I remember, I think it was like my birthday when I was in fifth or sixth grade. Uh, my brother actually took me to Best Buy, okay. and he was like, hey, pick out some, he's like, I want to buy you two CDs. Yeah. Um, my older brother had a friend uh, who would come over our house from time to time. And it's, it's funny because we would always make fun of him for it, but he would, every time he'd come over, he would bring a, like a CD binder. Yeah. And uh, I never really heard the music he listened to, but I knew my, again, my older brother just made fun of him for it. <laughs> so at the time, Green Day was really big with American Idiot. Okay. So I was like, oh, I know that like two songs off that from like the radio. So I, I picked that. And then I remember seeing the music video for a question by System of a Down okay. on MTV at like two in the morning one day. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I also want to check this band out. So I went home. I listened to American Idiot probably like one time, and I was like, eh, "This actually kind of, kind of sucks." <laughs> but I listened to it was mesmerized by System of a Down, and like that album like changed my life, dude. I listened to it like a thousand times, okay. and uh, so that was my first real introduction into the heavier side of music, and probably the album that really got me into music, like period. Okay. So, uh, j so you know, just take, just goofing around, like making yeah. jokes about it. And he never wanted anyone to touch it. So he went to the bathroom and I obviously grabbed the CD player and just like I skipped all the way to like the last song on an album. It was uh, Blind Guardian. That was the first like, it's obviously not the heaviest thing in the world, but that was the first time I heard, because before that it was just, you know, classic rock and all that yeah. stuff my dad. Uh, my dad listened to. That was the first time I heard it. And I remember it, cause, and it was like a big intro because it was just like a, you know, power chord and there's like orchestra going on. And I don't know if you ever heard of Blind Guardian, but he's freaking wailing away. I'm like, what the hell is this? <laughs> that was the first, that was the first time. YouTube was the coolest thing at the time. Oh, yeah, so that. all I did when I was younger, maybe around nine, I started listening to classic rock. That was like the biggest thing for me. No one else in my family listened to it or any kind of rock, to be honest. Um, and it just kind of evolved. Uh, I started with the local uh, classic rock station, 
Rock 107. And then I started listening to 97.9X, which they played Avenged Sevenfold. Okay. And I was like, this is sick. So upon listening to them on YouTube, then came Bullet For My Valentine on like a suggested play. And from there, I just kept evolving. Why do you think heavy music has stayed so resilient on staying relevant, regardless of being mainstream or not? If, if you have anybody that likes anything, yeah. if it's, I like to draw, or I like to do wh whatever it might be, yeah. you put them working at McDonald's, yeah. it doesn't make them not want to do what they want to do. That's true, yeah. Like, it's always part of them. Yeah. We're all wired a certain way. We all like what we like, you yeah. know? So, like... I think it's a culture. I think you're looking at people who want to be part of a community and they find a community with this subculture. And I think that's true for every other subculture. It, in, in my own opinion, like, you, you can't kill something that is, you know, part of someone. So many changes with, you know, other types of music. You know, you got all this pop music and country music and classic rock and, you know, alternative and everything. Um, but, like, the heavy music scene continues to, like, like, there's revivals right now with metalcore going on and hardcore just like and post hardcore and just like everybody like you know the, the sounds and the music continues to like grow and evolve um, despite like you know what hap what what else is going on around it how do you think this music plays an impact in the community that listens to it and how important is this music to the fans i, mean, I think it's cathartic for i think people who like it it is uh a lot of people can, I don't know, deal with anger or whatever. Yeah. It's, it, yeah, I don't know, it's cathartic in that way. It's a, people use it to let off stress, yeah. amps people up when they, you know, if, yeah, it's, like, it's a kind of a stupid example, but like if you're working out or whatever, people, yeah. you know, it just kind of, I don't know, it just gets you in the mood. It helps yeah. you focus. It. I don't know, I think it definitely gives people an outlet regardless of what genre you you listen to there's going to be someone who writes a song about the same things that you go through i think everybody interprets it a little bit differently okay. so i've known of people that find such a relieving outlet to it either for stress and or for bad situations in their life they're able to reach people with these messages and sort of like clue them in into like knowing there's things happening that you would have been completely unaware of. But um, yeah, I, th I think um, a lot of different genres can, can do that with different, whether it's like political or just like different concepts, just bringing awareness to like different types of ways of thinking or, or stuff like that. Oh, I mean, so I had, I guess, a rough childhood. Um, and it was like, arguably one of the only things that really kind of kept me going was it was being able to have this like, kind of community of people like you know it's how I met all of my best friends it's yeah. it's how I can get all of these like these ugly like thoughts out of my head and stuff what's the attraction behind screaming style vocals in this genre in this genre of music um to me I think it's just like just the amount of aggression and emotion it can portray just um like thinking of things that are like, why is this person screaming about this? Like, yeah. why is it worth screaming about? Yeah. Like, why why does it have to be delivered this way? Like, why is it more impactful when it's being screamed? Uh, sometimes you just gotta yell, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. and it is like any other, I am also a vocalist for like heavy stuff, just not in a band right now, but um, it's, it's, I find it very similar to like, you know, like, something like the drums where it's like you can just it's like this like primal way to get that out of your system i honestly i wish i could tell you i don't know um <laughs> like i'll listen to it no matter what style like especially those just really lows i just get like the stank face like like right. that's just disgusting but like it's disgusting in such a phenomenal way yeah. um i guess it's just unique to me okay. it's different yeah, it feels real though. I, I guess is like the best way I can describe it. Like screaming, like the I don't know, like yelling and stuff. Like hardcore bands, you know, they just you just kind of you know, put your heart out there, and I don't know, you just scream it. It's cool. I don't know. It's different than singing for some reason. It feels different. It comes down to like just like the way that it amps you up, kind of. Okay. 
it's it's almost like a drug. Yeah. Like um, it's just when I when I hear some like real like ooh, you know like yeah, I'm just like ooh, oh yeah okay. that's so good you know and yeah. it just it gets me going. Yeah, uh, uh, I mean for for me initially it was something I definitely like I had to. I had to get used to it because, like, I mean, being a musician and a guitar player, it's easier to be drawn towards it because there is that, not that other genres don't have, but I think metal in particular, technical proficiency is more at the forefront. So that was the big draw. And then with the vocals there, it was, you know, like, like I'll deal with you later. Yeah. Uh, but then I grew, you know, I grew to like it. And I think. If you were to take that away and put, you know, just normal singing, it would change, it would definitely change the vibe of it. And it is, it is like a, an intensity thing to have somebody yelling, screaming, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Uh, it's it's got to be energy. It's, yeah, it's just the, the fact that there's so much, I well, it should be power going into it. And I think the, the screamers that really like attract uh, my ears are the people who are literally screaming. After meeting and interviewing these bands about their influences and what got them involved in this style, I thought it was important to seek out someone who better understands the brain. Perspective is everything and it's important to see why those who play music enjoy it. But how does our brain develop a sound? How does music play an impact on us growing up? And how does the brain decode sound and music? In order to find these answers, I decided to give Dr. Bartoli a visit. So I'm Dr. Paul Bartoli and I'm I do a lot of things. I have all kinds of certifications. Mostly I work with children and families. So developmental psychology, counseling psychology, helping people, diagnosing people. Um, and you know, right now I'm a professor here at East Stroudsburg University for 23 years. How does a brain work in specializing hearing and understanding sound? Yeah, so this is something that starts before you're born, right? You know, your brain has been <clears throat> evolving while you're in utero. Um, and it's, you know, 70% done or so, but that last 30%, super important. That last 30% happens in the first five or six years of life and then continues slowly through adolescence. So that's the landscape we're going to talk about, right? Um, sound, critically important for humans, especially because it's developed before you're born. Infants who are developing, babies before they're born, learn sounds. Now, they don't understand how to speak, obviously, yeah. but they recognize. So that's why, um, great example, right? Their mother's voice. Yeah. Now it's underwater. You get that. So the frequencies, they change a little bit, right? It's muffled, right? Like you were under a pool. Yeah. However, you know, you hear how loud I'm talking. You know, your mom was talking the whole time while you were yeah. cooking in the oven. <laughs> um, and then we can take babies after they're born, and we put them in these, like, baby psychology machines, which are very cool. Like, we'll play voices on different sides of the room. And you know, if you play their mom's voice versus anybody else's voice. You know, they're curious, they look at the other voice, but they always, even a little infants, turn their head. You know, they echolocate right away, and they're, they're constantly looking when you play their mom's voice anywhere. They already recognize it. And the second way we know they like it is because when they hear their mom's voice, they'll, they'll like turn and they'll suck like crazy. They're like, they're like, hey, this is cool. You know, what you're exposed to before and then through those first four or five years of life yeah. sets the patterns okay. for the language you learn. And that's because languages are all very different phonetically, right? So you get tuned, fine-tuned to the sounds that you're exposed to. Okay. So another example of that would be, um, like, you know, languages, right? There are some languages, um, there's some really good examples, but there's like, there's some languages where two of the sounds or to them, it sounds completely different, and to people who are, have grown up as English speakers yeah. or most of the Western languages. You can't tell the difference between those sounds when you're an adult. Yeah, there's, there's a theory. The theory. Like, why do we like music? Like, why is our brain tuned to music? We're not the only creatures. Yeah. If, if you'll notice, there's studies with octopus. There's study with, like, your dog and your cat. Like, yeah. a, lot of, a lot of creatures seem to love yeah. rhythm, huh. you know, whatever it means to them. Um, so, you know, anthropologists, the number one theory is, there's a debate, number one theory is anthropologists would say this was probably, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of years ago, maybe even before Homo sapiens, but um, they would say that this was probably originally mating ritual, yeah. 
because other other creatures do rhythmic sounds as a mating call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then probably involved in, into the, it evolved into the socialization rituals and the mating rituals combined. Um, so then it become like it became like a reason to celebrate, right? Your day is over, we'll celebrate. Your week is over, you will celebrate. The sun, you know, is out, there's a full moon. Whatever it happens to be in your culture, you know, maybe it's a birthday now, or it's Christmas, or it's whatever else. You have different types of rhythms for different types of social celebrations. So it weaves people together. Question. All right. It's super hard. Okay. Um, if you could describe metal in a couple words, how would you describe a it? A couple words. Uh, see, I mean, it's so many different things. It's it's hard to pin it down because I mean, obviously, metal has like a hundred subgenres. Yeah. So sometimes it's ugly. Sometimes it's beautiful. Okay. Sometimes it's fast. Sometimes it's slow. Sometimes it's pissed off. Sometimes it's like the happiest thing you ever heard. It's it's crazy. There's uh, how about it's diverse. Very forward thinking, typically. Um, Energetic, passionate, awesome. <laughs> uh, I use two words, or one word, depending on how you look at it. Kick ass. OK. I would say metal is an aggressive 
stimulating and often noisy just genre of music. <laughs> All right, you ever seen Fight Club? You know how like the club started out as just this weird way to get an adrenaline rush, like on a Saturday night. I kind of, <laughs> I kind of feel like that's a big part of it. Like, like you go to these shows and it's crazy and it's wild and like you feel present but also like it's art that sounds good it's a weird combination of those two things pretty freaking sweet enjoyable cathartic maybe i don't know you can use pretty freaking sweet <laughs> you just i mean yeah yeah i don't know you have distorted guitars a drummer who hits hard some guy screaming and it just it's it's i don't know like it's this controlled chaos in a way because it all sounds so I don't know, it's, it's so intense, but everybody's just linked up. I don't know. That's probably the best I'm gonna do. If you know, I can. 